This is Willie. Thanks again for watching another one of my beginner videos. Recently, I posted a very short video on the maiden flight of the Multiplex Stuntmaster 3D airplane. And even though I didn't go into a great bit of detail about this aircraft, apparently a lot of folks are interested in it as far as what I can see from the amount of views that I've gotten within the past week. So I've decided that what I do is go ahead and put together a video that will show you some of the stuff that you really need to know about this airplane. Uh, it's my very first 3D airplane and the reason I decided to buy it was because I wanted to improve my flying skills and if you know anything about flying a 3D airplane it really gets you involved with learning how to use throttle as well as the rudder. So this video is going to talk a little bit about the instruction manual. There are some things about it that you really need to know. I'll share with you the uh, tools and items that I use in order to assemble uh, the Stuntmaster. Another thing I'm going to give you is a couple of resources where you can go online and look at how to perform some of the aerobatic uh, maneuvers that this plane is capable of. But anyway, I just want to let you know uh, it's a great airplane, doesn't cost that much money, but uh, it will improve your flying skills. And so what I want to do right now is let's just dive into the video and let me teach you a little bit more about the Multiplex Stuntmaster 3D airplane. Okay, how do you get started flying the Stuntmaster? Well, the first thing I would suggest to any person that has never flown 3D airplanes before is to get involved with a flight simulator. Basically, there are two things that you will enjoy about using a flight simulator. The first thing is there will be plenty of time for you to practice any type of maneuver that you're thinking about learning. And the second reason that you might want to use a flight simulator is that on the real Flight 7, for instance, or any other version that you might have of this software, there are also tutorials that will teach you exactly uh, how to perform certain maneuvers. So what I'm going to do right now is just let you look at a couple of uh, footage of me just practicing. And of course, uh, I'm learning how to fly this airplane too, so everything is not perfect. And then a little bit later on, I will show you some of the uh, tutorial footage that's included with the software. But anyway, this is a good way to get started and I think you'll find out that a flight simulator is exactly what you need to, uh, to practice on. Another great feature about using a flight simulator is that anytime you have a crash, it's instantly repaired. Okay, let's take a look at some tutorial footage. This particular maneuver is called the Harrier. You'll be able to go up and get some altitude. Now, the easiest way to enter this that I have found and the way I tell everybody is to pull the throttle back and add up elevator so it keeps the uh, airplane flying at the same rate of altitude, okay? And you just have just enough elevator as you're flying it around to keep the altitude set. You use the elevator to control the angle of attack. As you can see right there, I'm not completely buried on the elevator and I'm using just enough throttle to uh, keep it airborne, keep it flying at the same height. Now, in this configuration, you can also uh, fly, you can steer it around with the rudder, as I'm doing right here, you can steer it, just add a little left, and add a little bit of right, you can steer it back and forth, and the wings are still are flying also, even though it's in this high angle of attack. Okay, now the reason they call it... What's also nice about the tutorials is that you will also get an image of what the transmitter sticks are doing as the person is performing the uh, tutorial lessons. Uh, key elements here is hard to get used to is so is that you don't pull the tail underneath the airplane uh, it's pretty easy to do if you add too much power and too much elevator no. the next pointer that I want to give to you as far as getting ready is before purchasing the model is to go online and download the manual now when I first got uh, started with my uh, stunt master I read and reread the instruction manuals beforehand so that when it came to assembling the model there were no surprises for me at all. 
Another reason that I want you to download the instruction manual and review how to assemble the airplane is that there are some discrepancies that you'll find in the manual that comes with the kit versus the online manual. Now, uh, a little bit later on, I'll mention to you uh, what those discrepancies are and point them out to you. Okay, the final thing that we'll have to do in order to get ready is to purchase an airplane. Now, I originally got my airplane from Tower Hobbies. However, while doing some research to put this video together, I discovered a very wonderful side item I want to share with you. And that is, I think the same airplane can be found on nitroplane.com. It has a different name, but I want you to take a look at this plane. Uh, it seems to be the same thing as a Stuntmaster, so you may decide to get um, that plane instead of the Stuntmaster. They look identical, and I think you'll find out that they are truly the same airplane. With any build project, you'll want to have the necessary tools and accessories to expedite the assembly. Now here's a list of the required items and some others that made my build a little bit easier. Many of these tools uh, and items you probably already have or they are available at your local hobby shop. However, there will be some that you'll have to order online. I also want to give you a photograph of some of the items so you'll know exactly what you need to order. Okay, now that I've shown you all the items that you need to get started with the Stuntmaster, it's time for us now to put it together. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to show you uh, images from the actual manual, but make sure you pay attention to those areas that are marked in yellow, because a little bit later on I'll show you where the errors are in the manual, and we'll make some corrections to those. I'll also give you a link to a video that will show you exactly how the Stuntmaster is put together. Let's talk about some things that the manual does not tell you. First of all, after you start putting the airplane together, you'll notice that it does not tell you to insert the aileron horn uh, for the left wing. So you'll have to make sure that you do that. Then there's item number 15, which has to deal with the prop. It does not tell you that you need to uh, insert the adapter ring that holds the propeller against the motor. So what I've done is pointed out to you uh, a way that you can do that. And that washer goes behind the prop. Uh, the part list does not even show it. So you'll be a little bit confused about it because it shows a different part. Another thing you want to look for is to make sure that the push rod screws that go to the control horns are facing out so that you can tighten them. And then finally, one other thing that I discovered is that even though the airplane is already assembled, you may have to check the servos because they may end up being loose and you're not even knowing it. <laughs> 